In this video, we're going to go over implicit differentiation. So if we look at sine of x plus sine of y equals y, when we take the derivative of this expression, we look at each individual term. And the important thing to note is y is some function of x, we just don't know what that is. So anytime we take the derivative of y, we're really taking the derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function times the derivative of this inside function. In this case, the derivative of x, right, the derivative of x with respect to x is 1, but when that inside function is y, that's a placeholder for some other function of x. So you have to write dy over dx. So like you said, the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. The derivative of x with respect to x is 1. Plus the derivative of sine of y would be cosine of y times dy over dx. Because the derivative of the inside function is dy over dx. That's what you're solving for. And then the derivative of y is dy over dx dx. And then you want to rearrange this equation and solve for dy over dx by itself. Looking at some more examples from your book, if I just want to pull this example here, x equals y squared. So x equals y squared. Now if I take the derivative with respect to x, I get 1 equals 2y to the first power times dy over dx. So this would be dy over dx would equal 1 over 2y. Now this would end up with the same if I say y is the square root of x. Then y prime is going to be 1 half x to the minus 1 half, which ends up being 1 over 2 square root of x. So this is the derivative of y with respect to x. This is the derivative of y with respect to x, but in terms of maybe x and y together. Sometimes you can solve for y in the original expression here. And if I was to plug this in to the derivative, I'd get 1 over 2 square root of x, which is the same thing as the derivative of the function when it's written in explicitly in terms of x. It's not always possible to do this, and more complicated trigonometric functions make it a little bit more difficult. Anytime you're dealing with y, you have to be careful when you're doing the product rule or the quotient rule or the chain rule that anytime you take the derivative of y, it's dy over dx. So let's look at this cosine y squared. So we have cosine y squared plus x equals e to the y. The derivative with respect to x, right? The derivative of cosine is minus sine. Take the derivative of the outside, hold the inside, times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside would be 2y to the first times dy over dx plus the derivative of x with respect to x is 1 equals the derivative of e to the y with respect to x. So it would be derivative of the outside function, which would be e to the y, times the inside function. In this case, what's the derivative of y? Well, that's dy over dx. So here I go through and I want to rearrange the terms that have a dy over dx in them factor out the dy over dx and solve for dy over dx. So a lot more complicated and impossible to solve this expression explicitly in terms of x. But we can still talk about the slope at any point by calculating dy over dx. And a lot of times the slope will be asked at a point x comma y and you just plug that into your expression. So 
here's another example. X times Y equals 7. So I have X times Y equals 7. If I take the derivative with respect to X, I would end up with the derivative of the first function is 1, hold the second one, plus the derivative of the second function, which is dy over dx, hold the first function, equals the derivative of 7, which is 0. So dy over dx equals minus y over x. If I were to rewrite this expression as y equals 7 over x, and I was to find the derivative, I could write that as y equals 7x to the minus 1. y prime is going to be minus 7x to the minus 2. All right? So using this expression, plugging it in for y, I get minus 7 over x times x. And that would be minus 7 over x squared. So if I had a point, in this expression, I believe, had a point 1, 7. I wouldn't have to do any more work. I could plug in x equals 1, y equals 7, and end up with minus 7 is my answer. Both, both ways, if I just plug in knowing an x point, I would get minus 7 is the derivative. And if I know the x and y point, I can use this expression and get minus 7 as the answer as well. So just to kind of reiterate, this is the most important step in implicit differentiation. The derivative of y is dy over dx. And you have to be very careful when you're using the product rule or the quotient rule, what's going on there. Take the derivative of the first function, in this case, is the derivative of x is 1, hold y, plus the derivative of the second function, which is dy over dx, and then you hold the first function. If you have any more questions on this, please let me know.